Hey guys, this is Roxum Red 7 Today we'll be going over a video on how to customize your Tokyo Marie Glock, specifically with real steel mag balls. Now, as of right now, I only have one uh, real steel mag ball over here, which is right over here. This is the salient arm one. There's also a lot of different options that you can pick, like from agency arms, or from, you know, Zevtech, or from, um, I believe it's some uh, shooters, I forgot what it was. You can even get the Terran Tactical one. I believe there's a Terran Tactical one. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not too familiar with all these real steel companies because these companies don't exist here in Hong Kong, okay? So don't so don't kill me for that. Anyways, uh, this is just to give you guys a quick tip on how to install these magwells, even though I do not possess all of them right now. And let me explain to you how. So basically, uh, whenever you, you pick your frame and all that stuff, I recommend you to do all your stippling work and all their frame cuts and everything right now. Uh, the reason why is because what, after you do all that, you can then very carefully look into what you have to modify. Because where you have to modify for your um, block, it's a little bit tricky sometimes, which is why I'm making this video, just to make it a little bit clearer for you. So, let me quickly take this apart just to quickly show you. Okay, so the most important thing when you fit real steel magwells onto a Tokyo Mori Glock is your frame choice. I highly recommend you to go for a garter frame because one, whenever you modify the plastic, it melts in a very predictable way. So you tend to, it, it just tends to be better for modifications. So if you choose to use a Tokyo Mori frame, which, you know, some people, when you don't have a choice to get a garter one, sometimes you're stuck with the Mori one, you can modify the Mori one. Just that be wary that whenever the magwell if the magwell here is tight, because whenever you install the magwell, you sort of have to hook it at the front, then press it in. You may crack the plastic on the Murray one. So I highly recommend you to go for a garter one if you can. Most of you are probably going for the garter one. So, as you can tell here, there doesn't seem to be much of a change. The modifications that you do on the frame itself involve some of the front over here. Can you see that over here, that's been cut out a little bit. Now, the reason, now the very first step, I recommend you to do this right off the bat after you do your stippling because this is very, very simple to do. You simply remove the boot, so to speak. And let me explain to you what that is. It basically looks like that. Can you see that area over there? It's basically, oh, by the way, this frame I, I use to test stippling on. But can you see that there is a bit of a, like a, like a boot or a toe tip, so to speak? You basically have to remove that. Uh, and basically reduce it up to where there isn't much of it left. Don't remove all of it. This is only to help you install the magwell a little bit smoother. So basically allows you to push it up and then pop it into the frame afterwards. That That's all, that's what that modification does. It just makes things a little bit simpler. Now the second modification that you do, it's a little bit tricky. It involves inserting the piece that interfaces with the magwell itself. Uh, this is basically your, your ma I believe you call this a magwell insert. I'm not exactly sure what, what people call it in the States, but that's what I'm gonna call it in this video and don't kill me again, okay? I don't know my real steel parts because you know, there's no such thing in Hong Kong. Well, there is, but not too much. Anyways, I digress. So to install this part is actually not as tricky as you think mainly has to do with the inconvenience um, with the related to the tools that you need in order to do this. Let me clarify what, uh, what I actually mean. So in this area, you'll notice that it looks actually very, very difficult to deal with because sticking a file in here, it's a little bit difficult because the file that you use is going to have to be very, very small. I recommend you to stick with a, a half semicircle one and a round one. This is a round file and basically what you do is that you file this area over here gently just only a little bit just widen it over here and this allows the the magwell insert to go to push into this area a little bit easier for the starting start part you don't have to remove too much you just have to widen it a little bit just to make life a little bit easier for yourself this is not the primary modifications you just have to do a little bit now now moving on to the more important modifications is inside here there's a ridge you cannot it's very difficult for you to see on camera but there's a ridge inside and that ridge has to be completely gone the reason why you have to remove that ridge it's like a little it's like a little it's like a little step and basically while you're inserting your 
your insert, it will hit the step and it won't go in as deep. And basically this hole over here will not be aligned. It's very important that you remove that ridge. And the method that you choose to do it, this is where the tricky part is. Since the ridge is on this side over here, you have to remember that you cannot file too much. If you file too much and remove too much of that ridge, you may accidentally see parts of it stick out over here. You may accidentally uh, damage the frame. You may see holes pop up over here. This structure over here may be a little bit weaker. So be very, very careful when you do this. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's quite a bit of plastic over here. Why should I be concerned about that? Well, this is actually not a concern for most people. It's for the lazy people who wants to use a Dremel tool like this. This is a mill head for a Dremel tool. This is used to remove metal. Some people, what they like to do is that to increase, to speed up the process of installing your magwell, they like to just stick the Dremel tool inside and just grind away that area very, very quickly. I'm gonna warn you right now, unless you're very, very experienced at it, do not do it. I can fit magwells in like about two minutes or three minutes, but I'm gonna let you know right now, if this is the very first time that you're doing it, I highly recommend you stick to the file method just because it's a little bit more gentle. If you use the if you use a mill head or any grinding head to remove plastic, be sure to do it gently, very very gently. You only want to remove a very small amount and just enlarge this ever so slightly. Imagine you're drawing this, this half semicircle here, and that is all you're doing. You're only increasing the size, and that's about it. Be very, very gentle. That's my biggest tip for you guys, because this is where a lot of people get lazy and just go, just scrape all the plastic out in one go. Don't do it that way. Just do it the gentle way. Trust me, it's because, you know, after you stipple your frame and all that stuff, and then you do all that kind of damage, it's sort of a pain in the butt to fix. Um, and sometimes, depending on how much you damaged, it may not be fixable. So just be very wary of that. Anyways, n now that... Uh, now that we got that through, the next modification that you do is to this side. Is to this little wall over here. Only file down a little bit. File it down until you see this tip over here because it looks a little bit thinner. Until this area here looks a little bit thinner. Not too thin, just a little bit. And to top up this area, you also have to remove this area. You have to enlarge it. You have to grind that away and make this a little bit deeper, like go like that, about that. You don't have to do too much, you don't have to do too little. It's really up to you, up to this point, this is where I get lazy and I just grind away a lot. Let me give you guys an example. This is the uh, the SAI frame that I had with the real steel SAI mag, uh, mag insert. Can you see that I very, very sloppily just grinded away this area? I did it very, very quickly because I'm in a rush. Um, do it the gentle way. Uh, this is this is actually a very very good example to demonstrate for you that if you use a Dremel tool, uh, please be careful. I wasn't careful, and therefore I grinded away a little bit too much. But as you can see, my insert fits perfectly, and I have the screw installed. Okay, so just to let you know it fits. And oh, by the way, uh, in this video we will not talk about. The compatibility of magazines with these inserts because most of the time you will have to mod either modify your magazine or you have to modify the magwell. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Okay, it really depends on the magwell. Um, I don't test this all the time, also because sometimes when customers leave me their guns, they don't leave me the magazine and I don't have the kind of super big base plates that they do. I no longer have the UAC ones, by the way, because I thought they were a little bit too heavy. So I could not test if they work with their magwells, but it seems to work with the stock uh, Tokyo Mori base plate unless you're using a special one. I can tell you right now that if you're using the Salient Arms uh, magwell, I can tell you right now that stock Mori magazines will not work because of this area over here. It will basically get stuck and it will not lock into the, to the Glock frame. Just to let you know right now. So besides those modifications, that's pretty much all you do. Uh, the key point of this video is just to tell you, uh, be gentle, take it easy, take it slow, and you'll eventually figure it out. It's very, very simple to do. The trick is just to slowly grind it away, grind the semicircle area and this flat part away, very, very, by a very small amount. 
and it will be able to push in. The amount of effort that it takes for you to push this thing in, it's not much. I can actually pull this out with my own hand and I can push this in with my own hand. That's my method of judging how much plastic to remove. I choose to, to do that because if you leave the plastic too tight and if you force this magwell insert in, be wary that you may be able to crack the plastic, you might damage it, it might warp. Or it could cause this front part to be under too much stress and it might crack also, so just be wary of that. Um, it can happen, especially if you're using the... Um, if you guys ever bought the old style sailing arm magwell, where there's a bigger part at the back here that pinches the back, be wary, that's actually a very good example of how you can break it. I don't have one to show you, but it's basically the one with a big tail. That's the part that can actually pinch and break it, if you have experience behind that, that is. Um, that's my personal opinion, take it for what it's worth, but that's just what I'm recommending to you. So, after you do all those modifications, just um, just simply install your magwell, really. Um, again, I filed this front part off. Then there's a screw, which I lost track of almost. The person who owns this did not see this. You did not see me almost lose the screw, and you're not seeing me posting this to the video. Actually, I asked him if I could post this, and he said yes. Okay, I'm going to have to do this off camera. Yes, I cannot see the screw. I just installed it and that's it. Now, the last thing I want to note for you is that if you're very, very worried, um, you know you know earlier in the on the video I told you guys that it's best if you widen that area, there's another hidden reason behind it. The other reason is that if you encounter problems, like if you find that the magwell is misaligned or you find that you grind it away too much or if you find that the magwell insert is, is not uh, stable, I like to file everything down up to a point where I can pull it out with my hand. Okay, that's my final tip for you guys, if I forgot to say that earlier. Um, it's very, very important that you will be able to re to sort of reverse, uh, basically take out the magwell afterwards, just in case anything that's wrong, just in case anything is misaligned. In this case, this is perfectly aligned, because, you know, I, I spent time doing that. Um, it, was, it was a customer request to put this on, so that's the reason why I have it on. Um, I don't have the rest of this gun, by the way, so that's the reason why it's just sitting around. And um, I don't have, again, I don't have a real steel Zeptec magwell to show you, but basically the idea is that the front of the magwell is a lot larger and the back is much larger. So basically, you have a little bit more room to work with. Um, if you if you don't if you don't understand what I mean, is that basically at the front, I find that larger magwells they tend to overspec it a little bit. This is this is just my personal opinion. Okay, don't kill me again. Okay, I just find the bigger magwells to have a little bit more space at the front, and therefore I grind away less at the front. Um, when when you see your magwell, you're going to have to test this for yourself. So basically, when you first get your when you first get your magwell, just see how it goes on if it can go on at all. If it doesn't go on properly, then just grind away very very small amount. That's that's basically it really. It's very very simple to do. Uh, don't panic over it, don't fret over it, because in reality, you can do it very easily, even an idiot like me managed to do it, so you can probably do it. Anyways guys, thank you guys for watching the video, hope this video helps you, uh, let me know what you guys think, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe, uh, so I have a Facebook page that you can follow me on, where I'll be doing regular updates on Glock builds and other stuff. Peace guys, happy shooting.